Here's another inequality proof that I've been asked to show by mathematical induction. Prove by mathematical induction that n factorial is greater than n squared. Okay, now because we're dealing with factorials, um, we've got n being an integer here, positive integer. Um, but the person who sent this question to me didn't give me a domain, um, didn't say, you know, prove it for such and such a value. Now, if you go and try out some values, for instance, if you try one, you're like one factorial, that's one. And one squared is also one. One greater than one, that's not true. Um, and in fact, if you try the next statement, you know, the next number, two factorial, that's two. Two squared, that's four. Um, that's also not true. Three is not true either. The first value where this statement, this inequality is actually true, is n is greater than or equal to four. Well, n equals four is the first case, and then five, six, seven, and so on. Uh, it works just fine, okay? So the person who was trying to solve that, if you didn't have that included as part of your question, that might be why you're having difficulty solving it, approving it, because we'll, we'll need this fact later on, okay? So how does a proof by mathematical induction usually proceed? First, let's test that first allowable value, which is n equals 4. Okay, so on my left-hand side, I've got 4 factorial. The definition of factorial is you multiply by all those previous integers, and that gives me 24. What's my right-hand side? That's 4 squared, which is 16. So for this value, um, the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. So it's true for that value. Okay, good, establish that. Now let's keep going. I want to assume the statement is true for some arbitrary value um, k, which follows the same rules as n, which I've already set up up here. Um, so let's um actually I'll just I'll just put it in the next line. So what does the statement look like when you put k's in? Well, you've got this, which is greater than k squared, um, which is true for k greater than four. Okay, now that's what I've assumed. Now, on the basis of that assumption, I want to prove that it's true for the next value along, k plus 1, okay? Um, so that looks like this. You put a k in instead of the k, and put a k plus 1 in there as well. This is what I want to show, okay? This is where all the work is going to go. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do inequality proofs. One way, which I've showed before, is you can start by, this, by doing this, you know, um, you can write by assumption and this is your first line and then you manipulate both sides until you arrive at something either this or something equivalent to that okay now in this particular case um, I don't think that's the most direct way or the fastest or most obvious way here's a way that will be helpful okay have a look at this now you can see that just by a simple um, simply moving some terms around that this inequality is, is sorry that should be a factorial um, is equivalent to this inequality okay all I've done is move um, this term over here onto the left hand side now the reason why it's it's probably uh, more useful to us is that it's easier to prove that um, something anything is positive than it is to prove that two arbitrary things are, are one's bigger than the other or the other way around okay so I'm gonna work with this this guy here on the left hand side uh, let's consider move this out of the way consider what I had there on the left hand side um, namely k plus 1 factorial minus k plus 1 all squared. Okay, let's think about this. Now, um, if I just uh, take out, well, if I rewrite this so that I can take out a factor, make it a little more obvious, that k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 by k factorial, right? And then I've got my k plus 1 all squared here. Okay, so let me take out a factor of k plus 1. What that's going to leave me with is k factorial and a k plus 1 there. Okay, now, this is crucially important here that I factorize this out because now you can see that what I've got, uh, where's my other color? Here it is. What I've got in here, this k factorial, right? That appeared in my assumption. It appeared here, right? I'm going to use my assumption, um, which was that k factorial is bigger than k squared, and I'm going to sub it out here, okay? So I know, well, I'm assuming, you know, by assumption that um, this is bigger than k squared. So that means this statement is now true, okay? So that k factorial, I'm gonna put in for a k squared and the equality sign here, I'm gonna change for an inequality sign. Now I'm gonna expand this, that's minus k minus one. Okay, now, what have I got here? Um, 
I've, by assumption, from this line to this line, I should really write, but I've sort of run out of space here. By uh, assumption. Okay, I've used the fact that k factorial should be bigger than k squared. So this line is bigger than this line. Okay. Now, this is a little more useful to me because I can play around with this algebraically, right? For instance, this here, I can um, complete the square and I can factorize it and show something useful about it, okay? So, for instance, if you go like this, you know, uh, k plus 1 times. Now, have a look at this. That k squared minus k, I can complete the square. Um, if you sent me this question and you don't know how to complete the square, or if you're out there and you're like, I have no idea what that means, um, just let me know in a comment and I'll, um, I'll show you how to complete the square as a separate video. But so far, basically, all you have to do is um, you want to add and subtract a number, which will make this easy to factorize as a perfect square. Okay, so I've added a quarter, subtracted a quarter, so there's no change really there. That minus one comes from the previous line, okay? So now, this allows me to factorize one, two, three, these terms here, as um, uh, k minus a half all squared, okay? That minus a quarter and that minus one, that's minus five on four. Okay, now, this is what I've got so far. Now this doesn't look like it's any use to us, but actually it's very, very useful because I can say, but, you know, k is greater than or equal to four. That's one of the conditions I set on this number, okay? So I'm gonna try and move from this to this and make some conclusions about it, right? So k minus a half, that's what I've got there. If you subtract half from both sides, you get three and a half, okay? If I square both sides, which you do have to be careful with uh, with inequalities, but here it's going to be fine. It should be greater than 12 and a quarter, right? And now if I subtract the five on four over here, k okay, minus a half or squared minus five uh, on four, sorry, that should be greater than or equal to 11, okay? Which means that, you know, this number is a pretty big number, right? Like the smallest it can possibly be is 11. And depending on the value of k, it could be um, other kinds of, you know, bigger numbers, right? So therefore, this number certainly must be positive, right? K minus a half squared uh, minus five on four surely is greater than zero because it's greater than 11, right? Which is way bigger than zero, right? Now, do you see what that means, right? Um, I can take this and I can also notice that, you know, because K is greater than or equal to four, then K plus one is greater than or equal to five. So k plus one is greater than zero. Now what have I got here? Take these two uh, important lines here. This one and this one, right? Now if I've got those two, right? If I've got this being a positive number and this being a positive number, well, I don't know how big they are, but if I multiply them together like so, then surely, um, the product of two positive numbers is also positive, right? See what I've done there? Okay, now, come back to what the reason why I was talking about this, right? It's because what I have here is what I have here on the right-hand side, right? And that's k plus 1 factorial minus k plus 1 all squared, okay? Which is, which is greater than this, okay? So let's put it all together. Let's see if I can fit it on the page, okay? On the left-hand side, the most left-hand side, I've got k plus 1 factorial minus k plus 1 squared. Well, that's greater than uh, k plus 1 outside of this weirdo factorized thing I've got. k okay, minus a half squared minus 5 on 4. But I just spent all this time in red, right, doing the algebra to show that that product, this particular product, must be positive, right? It's greater than 0. So here's what I've got so far. So this is greater than this, and this is greater than this. Well, therefore, I can sort of forget about this middleman, right? Um, because I can just say, well, this guy on the left-hand side must clearly be positive, right? Because it's bigger than a number, which is positive. So that must, means it must be positive as well. So now I can use that and bring this guy back over the other side which is the statement I was trying to prove all the way back a couple of pages ago, right? This is the statement for n equals k plus one, right? So I can say, therefore, statement is true for n equals k plus one, 
provided, you know, it's true for n equals k. That was our assumption, right? Um, provided it is true for n equals k, okay? So since it is true for, we, I just evaluated it for n equals 4, Therefore, it must be true for all the k plus 1s after that, right? Um, 4, 5, 6, and so on, right? I.e. is greater than or equal to 4. And there's the proof.